Hello and welcome to Scratch 3D Platformer Tutorial, where I'll show you how to make a simple 3D platformer in Scratch. So let's go straight to the point. First, delete cat, add pen extension and make backdrop black. Then add 3 sprites, game loop, which will control other sprites, draw, which will draw everything, and update, which will move player and do collisions. Then add 3 broadcast messages, init, draw and update. Now go to the first sprite we created, game loop, and add these two scripts. Have in mind that variable all the time is local variable, which means when you're creating it, select for this sprite only. But delta time is global variable, which means for all sprites. Also the custom block game loop must have run without screen refresh option enabled. Do this for each custom block in future. These two scripts are making sure that each frame, broadcast, draw and update are called, and before drawing it clears screen. Delta time means how much time has passed between two frames, which will be useful when moving player. Now I'll show you how to draw 3D lines. First go to sprite draw and make these global variables and these local variables. Then make two custom blocks, set point 1 and 2, and don't forget to make them without screen refresh. Afterwards, make this custom block in its trigonometry. When you finish, make this, set clipping, and then create draw 3D line custom block like this. Now you are for sure confused. What all these complex scripts means? Draw 3D line custom block is called every time you want to draw a 3D line, then it makes sure you get effect of moving the view and then it makes effect you rotating the view. And after it checks if the line is behind the camera. If it's not, it runs first Z clipping, which check if only one point of the line is behind the camera. In such case, it fixes the point. Then it sets pen size based on distance to the camera. And lastly, it draws the line using pen extension. Have in mind you don't have to know how these custom blocks work internally in order to use them. Next, create two custom blocks, init and draw, and then call them on the broadcasts with the same name like this. Then inside init custom blocks, set those variables as shown. Then inside draw block, add next custom blocks with shown values. Make next variables visible like this. Be sure they're in slider mode by right clicking them and enabling slider mode. Then right click the camera X, Y and Z variables and make range from minus 10.0 to 10.0. And for camera rod X and Y, make range for minus 180 to 180 because they're in angles. Now check if you get the same result as me. If not, you probably made some mistake. Go check everything one more time. But still, you can notice if lines are too close to the edges, a glitch happen. To fix this, add two costumes. Small, where it's only empty costume, and big, which is well big. Insert three blocks in draw like this and make sure you hide the sprites. Are you tired of putting in a lot of work just to create one line? Have you ever wished there is an easier way to create 3D platformer? Then I have good news for you. This video is sponsored by Soba. Soba is just like Scratch, but 3D. There is no need for complex scripts and you can create 3D shooters, 3D platformers, anything you want in 3D. Oh, and did I mention 3D platformers? But that's not all. In Soba, each project is multiplayer, which means you can play them with your friends and other people. And yes, you can even use mobile devices to play it. If you want to try it, check link in description to become a tester. And don't forget to use code GG3D. Now we want to draw blocks. They're made out of 12 lines. So add this custom block. Yeah, I know this is probably the biggest chunk of code you've ever seen. But don't worry, to make it, first make this one line and duplicate it 12 times for each edge. Then notice, these 12 lines have their own combinations of either having or not having a size block. But the size X goes to the X, 
that's y to y and size z to z. So for example, the first column of x's first is empty slot, then there are two size x, then two empty and so on. Repeat this for each column so it is the same as shown. Then you need to check if you made some mistakes. Delete drawing lines and instead add draw block there with next values. You should get the same result as I. If not, check everything again. Now we only have a single block drawn. Now we need to make it work for multiple blocks. First thing you need to do is to create a new sprite and name it levels. Next, create these 7 global lists, name global variable named level, and lastly add new broadcast name init level. Then in new sprite add these 3 scripts, then add custom block named add block add as shown, and create custom block level 1 with next values, and lastly on the existing custom block init level add this part. Those scripts will add block data into lists, but we will still need to make script for drawing them. Now go to the sprite draw and create a new custom block named draw all blocks with next script. It's extremely important you use this set pen block instead of this. And delete this draw block block and instead place the newly created custom block. Now the result should look like this. But there is one problem. You see, despite red block clearly being in front of other yellow blocks, it's drawn behind them. That is because we can draw the blocks in any order, but from the furthest to the closest. For that reason, we need a script which will sort them. Now in sprite draw, add new 8 local variables. Get ID, sort low, sort mid, sort high, VX, VY, VZ, and Z. Then add two local lists, layer IDs, and layer values. Now add this custom block. It calculates the middle point of the block, and then it calculates how far it is from the camera. And then it inserts the index of block into layer ID list. That way, when you iterate it through it, the distance are from furthest to the closest. Next, modify draw all blocks blocks this way. You should see blocks now ordered in correct way. To be extra sure, go to level sprite and add this block into level 1. This will make 60 random blocks. If something looks off, then you made some mistake in previous part. So try to find the mistake again. Now we will add player. First go to sprite levels and create these 5 variables and create custom block add player. Then modify level 1 like this. Also, don't forget to set player size to 1 in init broadcast. Then go to the sprite name update where I said we are going to create scripts for player movement and collision. Then create two local variables collision and C. Then create update custom block and call it when broadcast is called. Also on init level set player val y to 0. Create these three local variables. Then create two custom blocks, update camera rotation and update camera position. Then inside update call those two scripts. Update camera rotation will make possible you can rotate camera with arrow keys or with mouse. And update camera position will make sure camera is always pointing to the player. Now you can delete these blocks which reset camera as they are not needed anymore. Also you can hide all variables. Next we need to add collision script. First create a check player collision custom block like this. You can notice that there is a minus one in this repeat block. That is because we don't want to check collision player against itself. Now finally we can create update player custom block which will try to move player down until it touches another block. Then modify update script like this. Now the game should look like this. Now we need script for moving player. First. We need to get track with which block player has collided that frame. Create a local list collision ID and modify check player collision like this. After that, create next local variables and create custom block player Y movement. Notice that argument is boolean input which is added like this. This block sets the jump strength. You can change number value depending on your game and add custom block player xz movement. Delete everything from update player and replace it with this. You can change this number to change the player's speed. Or you can even create a variable if you need it to change it easily. 
and now the player should be working using WASD keys. Next, to add a shadow, go to sprite levels and inside all player custom block, just add another block like this, then return back to the update and create variable shadow Y, then create custom block player shadow like this. Notice how it's very similar to the check player collision custom block, so you can copy the parts which are the same. It's important to mention, now our collision script must be minus 2, because we now have two objects which whom we don't want to check collisions. Also. We need to change the same thing in check player collision. Lastly, in update player, add player shadow custom block and set the shadow's position like this. Now the shadow should be working. Next feature we are going to add are block types like lava or bouncy platform. First, go to spread levels and create three global lists, block type color, block type name and block type. After create custom block, add block type like this, then create custom block in its block types like this. This custom block will make sure we can assign type to a block, then modify in it like this. Add this block inside the init level, then right click on add block add and click edit and remove RGB color argument, instead add type argument. Then you need to modify it like this. Also don't forget to add this line of blocks. Now it's important to remember every time you create block you must write which block type it is. So first in add player, the first block set type to player, for second set type to shadow. Notice how there are three new variables set in here. You need to create those three variables and do the same. Also in level 1 change the types to whatever type you want. This is my level for example. But still, we need to make touching different blocks types does something. Go to sprite update and create global list collision type. Then make sure you clear a list at start. And then add block type to the collision type after collision occurs. Now after collision, we should check what will happen after. Make those two conditions. One is for when you win and second is when you lose level. Also, we should not forget the bouncy platform. But the script for that should be placed inside player Y movement. Place it like this. Now check if everything is working. Now we need some levels to actually play. Create two more level custom blocks like this and create your own levels. Then modify init level like this. If you want more levels, you repeat this process. Now to actually create interesting levels, this is what I do. First get a paper sheet with a square pattern and create levels by drawing on it in next way. First draw a rectangle depending on how large your level you want to be. One square will be the same size as one unit in the game. Then like this write the coordinates for X and Z. Draw how your levels want to look. For separating block types I use circles with letter P for player and E for end. For regular block I draw empty rectangles. For bouncy platform I draw rectangles with X in it. And for lava I draw filled rectangles. Now for each block in your level create a single add block add custom block for that level. Then bottom left corner of each block should be the coordinate you enter. Notice that there is no Y coordinate on this level scheme, only X and Z. That is what you must figure out by trying different values. Then for size just count how much squares level is big. In this case it's 3 times 3. Also don't forget to write what block type it is. And then try the level and check if everything is looking as planned. If not, modify some values until you're satisfied. Also it's important to mention, if you're for example testing level 5, you would not want to complete first 4 levels in order to test the 5th one. That's why when creating a new level, simply in any block set the level to the level you want to test. And that's all, game is finished. Now you can create your own levels. You can also add music, sounds and mobile controls like I did for my game, link in description. Adding new blocks types can be challenging for beginners, but don't let that discourage you. You can always ask me in comments and I'll explain how I would add that feature. If you want to create better games, it's important to try to understand how stuff actually work instead of just blindly copying blocks. For that reason, you can change values, add and remove blocks and try to understand what they do. Try to figure out what is the logic behind them. For example, inside add block type, you can see that there are three values. There are RGB, red, green and blue, with values from 0 to 255. Try to change them to see what happened. Try to add new block types. Try to change player size. Try to change player size while running to see what happened. In short, you should know how each script works in order to upgrade your game. Of course, 
they might look complex on the first look, but the more you try to understand how they work, you will start to learn new things. And I repeat again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me down in comments, I'll gladly answer them. Also check the description, I leave some references for learning. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.